keeping it simple in the kitchen doesn't mean you can't have amazing food that not only looks incredible, but tastes fantastic too. My first recipe is so easy, it removes the stress from cooking and is a pleasure to make. Chili beef lettuce wraps. Cooking should never be a chore. The more you cook, the more confident you become. That way, you actually start to enjoy it. And that's the key to good cooking. Have a bit of fun along the way. This is minced beef and minced pork. The pork needs to sit in there, otherwise the beef's gonna dry out. It's really important to season the mince before you cook it. Pan, nice and hot. Touch of olive oil. Mince in. Breaking up like that really helps to sort of separate it so we can fry it off with a lot of colour. With your spoon, just go through. And start breaking that up. The most important thing to remember is mince is made up of cheap cuts, brisket, belly, and short rib. So it needs help. And frying off the mince for colour is so important. If this pan wasn't hot, your mince is going to boil. There's a horrible grey colour on there. And there's no flavour on your mince. Taste a little bit. Mmm. Tastes delicious. It's seasoned beautifully. See how crispy it's going. Take it. Much further than you've ever taken mince before. Nice and crispy. Smells incredible. And draining it is crucial. It keeps the mince nice and crispy. And you get rid of that excess fat. That's lovely. Now, let's wipe out the pan, then wash it. Low gas. Now we're going to add texture to the mince. Finely chopped chilli, ginger, garlic, and spring onions. Spring onions give the sort of mince a really nice freshness, because it just gives that crunch nice and thinly. Now, we will fry off the chilies, the ginger, and the garlic first. Sesame seed oil. Teaspoon only in. Garlic, chilli, ginger, in. Fry that off nicely. The sesame seed oil just lifts up the whole flavour. Touch of brown sugar. That starts to really caramelise the chilli, the garlic and the ginger. Mince in. Now, my fish sauce. That gives it the saltiness. You can see now why it was so important to get that mince really crispy, because nothing's going soggy. It's staying really crispy. Fresh lime. That makes the mince fragrant. And then lime juice. Roll it. You squeeze that in there. Incredible. I've got the salty. I've got the heat. I've got the sweetness. Now I've got the acidicness as well. And then finally, my spring onions in. Right at the last minute, so I've got crunch in there as well. It smells amazing. Literally cook the mince now with sort of 30 seconds to go. Gas off and take it out. Looks incredible. Smells so inviting. To go with the chilli beef, I'm making a simple sweet and spicy dipping sauce so everyone can dress the crispy mince to their own taste. Dipping sauce. A little teaspoon of the brown sugar soy sauce. Gives it a nice sort of dark, rich colour. Sesame seed oil. A tablespoon. And just top that up with a tablespoon of olive oil. That stops the sesame seed oil becoming too rich. A teaspoon of fish sauce, and then a touch of chilli. We leave the seeds in again. I want the heat in that sauce. So impressive, an amazing show off. Centerpiece, lime juice in, in the coriander. Chop it through once. Give that a little mix up. Just check the seasoning. Mm, that's lovely. Nice and rich. Now the lettuce. I'm going to use baby gem because it's really nice and durable and sort of quite strong. So you just sort of sit these nice trimmed lettuce leaves around. Now the exciting part, to serve. Take your lettuce up, spoon in your mince. And then a little touch of dressing. Just a little drizzle. Nice. And that's the secret of having good, easy, relaxed food is that you just help yourself. Food that looks and tastes a million bucks doesn't have to be complex. 
This dish is as fun to cook as it is to eat. One of the keys to keeping it simple is to prepare all the ingredients in advance. The more organised you are in the kitchen, the easier cooking becomes. Here are three of my favourite quick recipes that, with a bit of advanced preparation, are so simple to make. Starting with my easy, fragrant fried rice. First, get prepped. Chop garlic, ginger and chilli, keeping the seeds for extra kick. Slice spring onions, chop spring greens and trim a head of broccoli. Then whisk two eggs. Prep done, stir fry on. Add a good lug of oil to a hot pan. Garlic, ginger, chilli. Next, the spring greens and broccoli. Add water to steam. Then cook rice. This dish is perfect for using leftover rice. Make a well. Add the eggs, spring onions, and a dash of fish sauce. Scramble, then mix. Season. Top with lime and spring onions. My fragrant fried rice. Made simple with advanced prep and ready in five minutes. My next recipe it pays to get prepped for is garlic and saffron mayonnaise. First, get your ingredients to hand. Eggs should be out of the fridge and at room temperature. Soak saffron in warm water. Saffron is the most expensive spice in the world, made from the dried stigma of crocus flowers. But even a pinch gives a fantastic taste and a wonderful colour. Next, separate three eggs. Put the yolks into a mixing bowl. Add Dijon mustard, finely chopped garlic, the drained saffron, and a squeeze of lemon, then mix. Whisking constantly, add oil slowly. It won't take forever. For perfect flavour, use half olive oil and half vegetable oil. When the mayonnaise comes together, season. A smooth, thick consistency means it's done. Top with saffron. Rich, delicious and perfect with everything from seafood to sandwiches and chips. My second recipe, garlic and saffron mayonnaise. Easy to get right as long as you've planned ahead. My final dish, that's a cinch to cook with a little advanced prep work, is mussels with celery and chilli. First, prep the veg, chopped spring onions, shallots, a clove of garlic and chilli to taste. Then thinly slice celery, add a bay leaf and thyme, veg ready. Add oil to a pan and fry. Season, then add mussels and stir. Mussels are one of my favourite shellfish, cheap, healthy and delicious. Cover and steam for a couple of minutes. As the mussels open, add vermouth and aromatic fortified wine. And 150 ml of dry white wine. On a high heat, reduce the liquid to create a sauce. Discard any mussels that are still shut. Then finish with creme fraiche and chopped parsley. Minimal prep and cooked in less than 10 minutes. My mussels with celery and chilli. Impressive, affordable and super speedy. Make it simple in the kitchen by prepping your ingredients in advance and I promise you'll find these three recipes a pleasure to make. You don't need to spend a fortune on masses of kitchen equipment. This is my quick guide to kitchen knives. Basically, three knives. A heavy-duty chopping knife, 
followed by a small paring knife, which is brilliant for prepping vegetables. And then this baby here, a serrated edge knife for carving and slicing. Basically, that is it. Before you buy a knife, hold it in your hand and make sure it feels right for you. The secret behind a great set of knives is in the handle. If you're comfortable holding the handle, your cutting is going to be so much easier. The firmer the grip, the better the chopping. The heavier the handle, the more control you've got over the blade. With these three knives, you can't go wrong. My next recipe is easy and a pleasure to make if you're organised with everything ready in advance. Miso poached salmon with Asian vegetables. Organisation is key in the kitchen. Take a couple of minutes before you start and set yourself up. Make sure you know where everything is, stock, spatula, pan, etc. It becomes less stressful, but more importantly, the end results are incredible. First off, get your pan on. Whisk and stock. Start off with this amazing fermented soybean puree. Into the pan. Three nice tablespoons. Gas on. Now get your fish stock and whisk into the puree. Be generous with the stock. You want this nice, light broth, basically. You can buy miso paste from big supermarkets and it works brilliantly with salmon. Poaching the salmon in the miso stock gives it a really nice sort of sweet, earthy, creamy flavour. It's incredible. Bring it up to the boil. I'm going to infuse the broth and make it a little bit more fragrant. Kaffir lime leaf is very lemony inside the miso broth. Then chop chilli. Chilli's in. And finely sliced ginger. That's simmering beautifully. Now, we're going to poach the salmon. Poaching means cooking it in liquid, but it's cooked gently. And the secret here is to keep that salmon skin on. If we took the skin off now, the salmon can actually break up whilst it's poaching. Skin side, down. Just going to slide that in. Under. Nice. The minute that stock starts boiling, turn it down and let it simmer. Take a little ladle and just every couple of minutes pour over. That makes sure the top of the salmon is cooked evenly and keeps it nice and moist. And poaching is one of the most delicate ways of cooking, so you have to handle it with care. Whilst the salmon's poaching in the miso broth, start preparing your vegetables. I'm using tender stem broccoli and bok choy. I always like to cook the leaf and the stem separately. The leaf is like sort of spinach, and the stem is so much thicker. It's almost as thick as a stick of celery. So I like to get the stems sliced, just so I've got that nice sort of crispness. Place the leaves together nicely, roll them up nice and tight, and then slice them down. Now, my salmon, already the flavour in that broth has been elevated. Mm. Now it tastes really fishy. You've got the heat, of the, the chilli, spiciness of the ginger, and the kaffir lime leaf. Take your fish slice and place it very gently underneath the salmon and push it down. Fish slices are flexible for that reason. Bend it. Lift it up, just touch, you're looking for a springy, firm texture. And just sit that on top. A little touch of the broth over it. It stops it from drying out. Leave that to cool down for two minutes. Bring the stock back up to the boil. Broccoli in, bak choy. Stems in, a little taste. Mm. It's getting better and better and better. Cook the broccoli and the bok choy stems for one minute and then add the tops in. Turn the salmon into your hand and just peel all that skin off. And the skin also helps to keep the salmon nice and moist. Then gently flake the salmon. That's the secret behind poaching. Everything just stays so moist. Wonderful long shards of pink. Now, just before we serve, we're going to add our mushrooms. These are enoki mushrooms. You can buy these enoki mushrooms in big supermarkets and good grocers. Slice them off. I'm going to put half in, and the other half I'm going to serve with the salmon. Toasted sesame seed oil. Put a little drip in there. Just rub. And you're just lining, almost like a little coat of varnish. Start off with your mushrooms and then my salmon. 
four nice layers. And then finally, the mushrooms. Top with the vegetables. And then finally, a nice ladle. That beautiful, really sumptuous, rich stock. Lovely. And that is an amazing miso poached salmon soup. Simplify your cooking by getting organised and amazing food will be coming out of your kitchen every day. And for great food, you need great ingredients. Next up, my shopping guide to getting the finest fish. When I buy my fish, I only want the freshest and the best. And if anyone knows how to get the best, it's Roger Kent Barton. He's been buying and selling fish at the world-famous Billingsgate Market in London for over 50 years. I love fish. I think it's the greatest food of all time. I sell literally every variety there is. I could feed you a different fish 365 days a year. This guy really knows how to sniff out the good from the bad. All fish smell different. The longer it's around, the more fishy it will smell. When it's lovely and fresh, it doesn't smell. Whenever you're going to buy fish, don't be frightened. Get your nose right into it. Don't go like that. Get it into it. Smell it. it smells delightful. It smells what I call salmony, and it's lovely. Barramundi. It's a lovely fish. The way to tell good fish is, look at it closely. It's shining. It's still got the bloom on it. His eyes are as bright as yours. Look in the gill, lovely and red. Put it in a bag for the gentleman, please. People should always be asking about their fish. What kind of fish is it? Where does it come from? A nice salmon. 19 pounds. It's a bargain at 20 pounds. Roger's right. Salmon's brilliant value and a great all-rounder. Really healthy and super delicious. Here's a quick look at the different cuts and how to use them. Whole salmon always impresses. It's fantastic stuffed and steamed, either in a fish kettle or in the oven wrapped in foil. Steaks are great value and brilliant baked. A side of salmon is perfect for poaching, home curing, or baking in pastry. The fillet is so versatile, easy, fast to cook, and great for pan frying. Smoked salmon, delicious cooked or raw. I love it with scrambled eggs. Broadly, there's white fish and there's oily fish. They come under two different sections. Here we have white fish. It's lovely. It's cod. It's the best cod in the world. It comes from a place called Peterhead. It's nice and white. The whiter, the better. One of the most oily fish you'll find. Mackerel. There it is. Lovely colour with most fish. The fresher they are, the harder they are. If you're not well and you're ill, have a mackerel. Sprats, otherwise known as top hats. Here we have flatfish, and these are known as place. As you can see, they've got spots. The redder they are, the fresher they are. It really is a lovely fish to eat. King George couldn't have better. For fish fresh enough for royalty, follow your fishmonger's advice, and you'll never, ever have another dodgy Dover sole again. Next, my tricks of the trade and kitchen tips. First, how to chop an onion. This is the root. That's absolutely crucial. Leave that on there. If you cut that off, the onion will start to bleed and you'll start crying rapidly. Slice going forward. Let the weight of the knife do the work. Three fingers, one in front, two behind. And this part of the knuckle is going to guide the knife. Fingers on top of the onion, point the knife towards the root and try to get as close to the root as possible. Nice, long stroke. And then push the onion back together. Push the knife halfway in to the onion. Slightly tilt the knife down. One at the top. And then gripping the onion like a tennis ball, holding it together in place. With the weight of the blade to cut through that onion to get to the base of the root. Again, turn it round. Up and down motion. And that's what we're left there. No waste, just the root. And look, there, you've got a really nice, finely chopped onion. So much great cooking depends on starting with a high enough heat. If a recipe calls for a hot pan, put it on early so it gets smoking hot. And always remember to preheat your oven at least 20 minutes before cooking. A 
clean cook is an efficient cook. My tip for a tidy cooking area is to always have a waste bowl next to you. It saves you going back and forth to the bin. Never add salt to eggs before cooking them because it ruins the texture and dulls the color. Instead, save your seasoning to the very end. The key to cooking meat is to make sure it's at room temperature before you begin. Cook straight from the fridge, the muscle fibers will be tight, which results in tough meat, and always let it rest afterwards. So it relaxes, becoming tender and juicy. Follow my ultimate cookery course, crammed with key lessons. Top tips and 100 recipes to stake your life on, and you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on, get cooking.